I, I bet a million dollars on Doom against Lil Wayne. Oh, what up? The old rapper, shut up, and while you shutting up, put a shirt on, at least a button up. He rhymes as, as weird as I feel. Like, dude, I swear to God, when I got that, when I saw that Mad Villain record, I bought it on vinyl. I didn't even have a record player. I bought it on vinyl just to stare at the album. And I stared at it, and I just kept going, I understand it. <laughs> when a famous person dies, it's normally felt on a human level first. Through their artistry or interviews, these notable figures tend to divulge personal information about themselves. But in the case of hip-hop's greatest supervillain MF Doom, his death registered in a more individualistic way. Born in London, but molded in New York City, the rapper, whose likeness is now being captured in graffiti format around the world, could have had a very different career. While his projects with fellow creative forces such as Danger Mouse, Mad Lib, Czarface, and MF Grimm have established that he's always eager to collaborate with another like-minded artist, Doom's tenure as an MC began with the structure of a crew. Operating under the name of Zev Love X, a young Daniel first made a name for himself within the KMD crew. A traditional clique of the era in every aspect, the group, who began as graffiti artists and break dancers before focusing on the music, made their intentions of causing much damage clear and were first plucked from obscurity by MC Search for a feature on third bases, The Gas Face. After being signed to a deal by Electric Records, it seemed as though this conscious yet comical crew was on the fast track to carving out a prolific career. But just as the label had begun to take issue with the provocative imagery that graced their sophomore album and its combative five percenter politics and shelved the project, their journey would be permanently derailed when DJ Subrock, KMD member, and Dumoulet's brother was tragically killed. Naturally, the young Zev's life was in free fall as he mourned the loss of his sibling and creative partner. In a typical uncompassionate move from the major labels, the promising MC was released from his record deal after Subrock's death and entered a period of wilderness and poverty in which he would regroup. And just like any supervillain origin story, Doom uses anger over the mistreatment he suffered as his motivation to remake the world in his image. Despite thinking that they just discarded one MC, Elektra had no idea what sort of titan they'd unleashed upon the industry, inspiring thousands of other artists to reject commercial norms in favor of constructing legacies on their own terms. After retiring the Zev Love X moniker, Dumoulet leaned back upon his childhood love of comic books to inform his future. Seeing as he'd always gravitated to larger-than-life characters, Daniel used his career crossroads as an opportunity to reinvent himself in the style of Victor Von Doom, the Marvel Comics villain that commanded his own kingdom of Lativia and was the arch-nemesis of the Fantastic Four. In a 2003 conversation with Peter Augustin of The House List, the enigmatic metal face explained why this tortured genius resonated with him. They call me Doom too. Yeah. So I could always relate to that character a little. I liked him. He was ill. Yeah. He always come through and he'll disappear. It seemed like they killed him, but he always comes back. Only up until after the KMD did I really say word, yo. If I was to come back, it just hit me one day. I know it had to be as that dude. Like. Beginning with the 1999 studio album Operation Doomsday, through the wildly inventive M.M. Food and his projects under the name of Victor Vaughn, this reinvention would act as a starting point for one of hip-hop's boldest minds to make his mark on the world and change how he thought about the modern rapper's presentation, production, and wordplay. Filled with humor, absurd references, and mutated samples, Doom's trademark style is the main event when it comes to his appeal. But it's important to remember that our fascination with mysteries in a world where everything spelt out for us certainly didn't hurt. After all, this is a man who has one of the most recognizable silhouettes in hip hop while still being able to go to the grocery store without much disruption. Away from paying homage to the comic book character that inspired his presentation, a 2015 Red Bull lecture saw Doom explain why he chose to operate in secrecy. In this rare public appearance, he revealed that it all comes down to allowing listeners to focus on the merits of his material, then relying on the mainstream infatuation with manufacturing a public image for MCs. Before, we ain't know what MCs looked like until we went to the party and seen them rocking. So, you know, you really was going off the sound of the record. 
straight skills. See, once it started getting more publicized and, you know, it started being hip hop, started being more of a, a money making thing, then you get these corporate ideas where you want to put what it looks like. I'm going to come with the angle of it don't matter what I look like, you know, it don't matter what the artists look like, it's more what the artists sound like. So the mask really represents the, the whole, like, to rebel against the trying to sell the product as a human being, you know what I mean? And it fits with the theme of the rebel, the villain. The villain represents anybody. Anybody in here could wear the mask and be the villain. Man. Unwilling to play the game that had thrown him aside when he was at his most vulnerable, Doom's innovations in production and delivery wouldn't just make him into one of the biggest darlings in hip hop history, but also pave the way for many of the fearless trailblazers that were to come. Between his rhymes and production alone, Doom's influence has directly contributed to the artist makeup of Danny Brown, Denzel Curry, Lupe Fiasco, his former protege Bishop Nauru, Mavi, and Open Mike Eagle even through the notable mainstream fans such as Drake, Schoolboy Q, and later work of regular collaborator Ghostface Killer. But for evidence of how Doom blew the doors of perception off for MCs, look no further than the words of alternative hip-hop favorite JPEG Mafia. I, I looked up to MF Doom in particular a lot because um, his come up was kind of strange, you know? He kind of was in the industry and then he left the industry because of tragedy and then he came back almost like on, re on some revenge shit or something. I don't know. It, it's kind of like he doesn't, it's, he's like the anti-hero to me. But Seen as the be all end all of underground hip hop by many listeners, the allure of Doom was so powerful that he inspired fanboying an artist that fans tend to stand in their own right and never was this clearer than when a young Tyler the Creator in Earl Sweatshirt, then leading the charge for rebellion in our future, encountered him at a festival in Europe. He said T Boogie in them. Doc, he calls you T Boogie. Seen as the patron saint of rhymes by some, Doom has never been one to embrace his status as an icon or fall into the trap of congratulating himself on his iconic work. As while he was a hero, that didn't mean he wasn't a reluctant one. In a comment that ruffled many feathers, Doom diehards were forced to wrap their heads around the fact that for the villain, hip hop was a financial pursuit. I write rhymes to get money. Other than that, I don't listen to hip hop music, Doom informed Spin in 2019. I only do this for the simple fact of pointers per rhyme, the point game. It seems to be a profitable thing these days, and nobody else is really paying attention to it. Elsewhere, Dumoulay took his fair share of criticism after it was revealed that he truly lived the motto of plotting shows like robberies that he'd reference on MM Foods One Beer, using decoys or Doom bots rather than performing in person and, more often than not, getting caught. But, for all that his harsher critics believe that he may be shortchanging his audiences, it's important to remember that this is a man that embodied his character to the fullest. And when Talib Kweli appeared on Hannibal Burris's podcast, Talib revealed Doom's typically devious reasoning behind why he and he alone could get away with this. All right, MF Doom is the Andy Kaufman of hip hop. Okay. Yeah. MF Doom is a super villain. I said, why you sometimes don't come to the show? His answer to that question was, I don't leave any money on the table but sometimes it's not enough money. So when it's not enough money, I send the imposter. I said, but listen, isn't that wrong? <laughs> but his answer made perfect sense. He said, I'm the super villain. Yep. And he I'm never, not your friend. He, he never said You he don't was, have to yeah. like me. I'm yeah. the villain. Despite pulling off heists like this and relishing in the money that came with his status in the game, that doesn't mean that Doom wasn't passionate about what he did and remained committed to delivering quality output for his fans. In typical Doom form, his most candid interview ever came in Addiction UK where he discussed everyday things such as his upbringing, his siblings, and what he termed as his five beautiful children age ranging from eight months old to 22. And in the midst of this candid display, the enigmatic rapper revealed that he was relentless in the pursuit of mastering a craft that many already believed him would be the leading authority in, eventually admitting that he felt he would never be satisfied. I haven't yet reached the top. That's, that's the goal everybody seems to be reaching for. It's a, it's a goal though that is, is really outside of my reach, I would say. I'm constantly striving for perfection elevating and, and educating myself in a way that, all right, I'm better than I was the, the previous day. That could go on forever. There's really gonna not ever be a top. You know, I don't think I'll do it in this lifetime. 
At just 49 years old, Doom would leave the Earth on Halloween in circumstances that we, fittingly, may never know. Considering how hard he worked, there's no surprise that in the weeks that followed his death, talk had turned to whether there was more music to come. I hate to say this, but we were actually working on an EP, Flying Lotus wrote on Twitter after his passing, there were more songs that I haven't even heard. But as much as fans may thirst for unreleased work and expect posthumous releases, anything Flying Lotus or anyone else got in the vault should be left on the shelf as Doom, much like the similarly magnetic Prince, kept things locked in the archives for a reason. Case in point, during a lecture with Red Bull Music, Mad Lib discussed why, despite being completed in its totality, the sequel to Mad Villainy will be stowed away from public view. I like to listen to the album, no, I love it. People have too many expectations, thinking it should be this or that, but it's just a continuation. Yeah. Really like a step above or a step lower. It's just more songs. In this offhand quote by Mad Lib, he described how, even without formally announcing the follow-up to their masterpiece, it was already dwarfed by expectations. Now that Doom has passed on, they'd be completely unreachable, and as such, hip-hop listeners will have to be content to delve into the back catalog that often has more ideas on one album than some MCs do in their whole discographies. And when they get the chance, they should point new listeners in the direction of the subversive genius, as by doing so, the supervillain can live forever. Whether through word of mouth, best of lists, or video essays such as this, there's always going to be ways for fans to encounter this mythical artist, and when they hear that music for the first time, it's likely that death won't be part of the equation. As by making himself into something superhuman, Doom has the ability to live on where others will be confined to reality. Sad as it may be that he's passed on, the hip-hop community can take comfort in the fact that while Daniel Dumoulin was a mortal man, MF Doom is infinite.